Muslims believe in all the messengers of Allah as human beings who were chosen to educate people, warn them, and give them glad tidings. As for those who believe that there is only one God and there is only one humankind, because there is no difference between us, men are not better than women, whites are not better than the blacks, why would you think that God would send different messages? To confuse us? Of course not. And it was always one message sent by God to the humankind and that was always the message. Worship God alone and do not associate any partners with Him. Definitely, this is what Noah said, what Abraham said, what John the Baptist said, what Jesus, what Moses and what Muhammad, peace be upon them all, said. There is none worthy of worship except the Creator Himself. And it was never religions. It was always one religion. Not the religion of Muhammad alone, not the religion of Jesus alone, not the religion of Moses alone or Abraham, but rather the religion of Allah that was carried once by Jesus and once by Moses and once by Muhammad. And this means that by, by becoming Muslim, one joins Muhammad in his religion, Jesus in his religion, Moses in his religion. As Muslims, we believe that all of the messengers of Allah were the most noble of people to walk the face of the planet Earth. They committed no major errors nor sins, and that was because they were chose by the divine Allah, God Almighty. They delivered His message in a perfect way, and maybe somebody will ask how? And we'll remind them that the one who chose them is the all-perfect, the omnipotent, the master of all, the Lord of everything, God Almighty. And when He chooses something, he chooses it with absolute wisdom and knowledge. Thus he chose these people to be those who would deliver and be the forebearers of his message, his light which was sent to humanity. Muslims believe that messengers are not divine, which means that none of them is the Son of God. Islam respects and dignifies Jesus Christ. The Qur'an confirms that he was born miraculously without a father and through the same power which had brought Eve to life and Adam into being without a father or a mother. Truly the likeness of Jesus with God is as the likeness of Adam. He created him of dust and then said to him, Be, and he was. Muslims hold Mary the mother of Jesus in high acclaim. The Qur'an bears witness to her lofty status by saying, And remember when the angels said to Mary, O oh Mary, indeed Allah has exalted you and purified you and chosen you above all of the women of the world. Jesus, the son of Mary, is one of the most important messengers in Islamic tradition. He represents one of the five great messengers recognized by the Qur'an. He suffered great persecution and was maligned by many, but his message has endured and the light of his message continues to shine till this day. Allah emphasized in the Qur'an the importance of believing in all the prophets and all the scriptures as a condition of faith. Say, we believe in Allah and the revelation given to us, and that given to Abraham, Ishmael, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes, and that given to Moses and Jesus, and that given to all prophets from their Lord. We make no distinction between one and another of them, and we submit to Allah in Islam. Prophet Muhammad is not the founder of Islam, like some people claim. Prophet Muhammad is just the final messenger of Islam, a colleague of Jesus and Moses, a graduate of the same school from which they graduated, the school of God. The traditions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, 
represent to Muslims what is commonly known as the Sunnah. The Sunnah or traditions of the Prophet represent the second source of legislation in our Islamic tradition. It is important to know that the Prophet Muhammad did not come out of a vacuum, but he was loved and adored by his people prior to becoming a Prophet. In fact, they used to call him Al-Ameen, which means the trustworthy. After he brought his message, many of those same people turned against him. But the reason for this was that his message was a sincere message. It was not about buying or winning over friends, but about changing hearts and minds, and redirecting the focus of human being from the worship of false idols to the worship of the Creator, from the oppression of the poor to justice and equality in society. His message was a powerful message that shook the hearts and minds of his friends and neighbors. Most of those who possessed power and wealth opposed him. And there was a struggle for 23 years between believers and idolaters, truth and falsehood, good and evil. And they tried to stop him with all means. They tortured him and his followers. They even killed some of them and they negotiated with him. They said, what do you need? Do you need money? We will give you wealth. Do you need women? We will marry you from the most beautiful women. And we can make you a king if you want to be a king. But he refused. And he said, if they put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand to quit, I won't stop till the message is conveyed or I die conveying it. He's the most beautiful example for all people because he was not just a prophet. He was also a father, a husband, a teacher, a politician, a negotiator and a warrior. He was a reformer to be able to convince Jews, Muslims, pagans 14 centuries ago to sit together and sign one pact saying that if our city is ever under attack from outside, we will all side by side defend our city. That was a revolution at that time because at that time loyalty was only for the tribe. But he was able to convince them to transcend their tribal differences and start thinking for the first time as a civilized society. One of the most important things that we take from the Prophet's teachings and his message is hope. This hope still shines in the hearts of millions of Muslims the world over. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said something that always has shaken me and always caused me to find the will to have a hope in my Creator. He said that if the Day of Judgment was to start and you had a tree, a small tree in your hand, plant that tree. Before Prophet Muhammad, society downgraded women. They were personal belongings of men and even considered objects of inheritance. Prophet Muhammad condemned this abuse of women. He gave them the right to inherit, to divorce, to gain an education, and to keep their identity and public life. He said, none of you truly believes until he wishes for his brother what he wishes for himself. Beautiful words, but that's not easy. This means that if I'm applying for a job and a brother is applying for the same job and he got it, I should feel happy for him exactly as if I am the one who got that job. He said, if you see something wrong, then change it with your hand. If you're not able to, then speak against it. If you're not able to speak against it, then dislike that thing in your heart for indeed that is the lowest level of faith. The Prophet Muhammad said, the powerful is not he who knocks the other down. Indeed, the powerful is he who controls himself in a fit of anger, simply because many crimes are committed when people are angry. One of the most beautiful statements of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and one which really moved me prior to becoming Muslim and even after I've been a Muslim for some time, is the statement of the Prophet which says, Indeed, God Almighty does not look at your shapes and sizes, but He looks at your hearts and your actions. 
This very simple statement has a huge, 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 huge impact on the way of life of all Muslims. Because our life as Muslims is based on two important qualities, sincere hearts and righteous actions. Thus, for example, if somebody was to give charity with an evil intention, they would not be rewarded. And if somebody was to have a good intention and not follow that with a righteous action, that would also be not rewarded. But Islam is asking us to balance our life between a spiritual reality and a physical reality. And thus, through this statement of the Prophet Muhammad, we become complete, comprehensive, balanced, beneficial human beings.